Jeff Mateer, you heard me mention earlier, was one of the lawyers on the case against the city of Austin before his time as the first assistant attorney general. And prior to working that, he also served as general counsel for First Liberty Institute in Plano, Texas, uh, one of the, the largest religious liberty uh, nonprofit legal entity in the country. And Jeff Mateer received his law degree from SNU, his undergraduate degree from Dickinson College. And he's married, and he uh, has three children. His lovely wife was at our dinner last night. Jeff uh, Mateer is first assistant attorney general for the state of Texas uh, for the Texas attorney general, Ken Paxton, who is the top law enforcement uh, general, top law enforcement individual for our state. A lot of times people don't think about that. They think, but you look on the attorney general's website, that's specifically what it says. And that's a lot of responsibility. We've got a big office. A lot of different things going on. Uh, you know, you and I interact. Um, we've done work before, and there are issues that you and I care about, a variety of things. But the, the function of the NCM, tell us a little bit about the structure, the amount of people that work, and just the, the diversity of things that are done under the Attorney General's office. Yeah, and Jonathan, you know, uh, since we got to, for a little while, work together, and uh, every day, uh, now we get to work alongside each other occasionally. Um, but I came into the position three and a half years ago um, as General Paxton appointed me as his first assistant, which essentially oversees the office. Uh, uh, and I, quite frankly, I, I probably didn't fully appreciate everything the Office of Attorney General did and does. And so during, I got to, I've gotten to learn about that job. I, now what I know is we have 4,200 employees. Um, about 800 attorneys. 4,200. 4,200 employees who report up to, to me and then to, to General Paxton. Uh, 800 attorneys, which, which makes us the largest law firm in, in Texas. Nice. And I suspect, uh, therefore, the largest law firm in a lot of part of the country. We're the second or third largest attorney, uh, attorney general office in the country. Uh, California, New York, of course, like. Uh, to empower their attorneys in general, to usually create havoc versus uh, actually support the Constitution. Uh, and uh, learn that we have over 100 offices, which I didn't know that. And when you think about the attorney general, the way I think about it is, you know, I love baseball, so I think of a five-tool player. Um, and so there are five main functions of the Office of Attorney General. Uh, the first is the one that I think we all know, and that's to defend our laws, to, to, to defend the laws of the state of Texas and defend um, the, the office holders. And we do that. A lot of the things that you all have been talking about the last two days, this great, when great pieces of legislation are passed, it's our job at the Office of Attorney General to defend them. So if there are abortion laws, for instance, that the legislature passes, they will be challenged. They always are. And it's our job to, to defend them. So you knew that. And the other thing that we do that you probably know is we serve the children of Texas by enforcing child support laws. And almost over half of our employees are dedicated to those services. Uh, one in four Texas children receive child support. That's a commentary. And I'll let you draw that conclusion that, that it's that high. But we're involved in that. One thing that I really just often hear, well, the, the Attorney General is not involved in criminal matters. I mean, I think I've heard that growing up through the years. That's absolutely false. Um, one of the things that the Texas Attorney General is charged with is, is securing justice for Texans. The legislature has given the Attorney General specific areas of responsibility that, that sometimes it's with our local DA, and sometimes it's even things that the local a DAs don't focus on. One of the areas that General Paxton has made a huge priority is combating human trafficking. And we have specific responsibilities with respect to human trafficking. We have specific responsibilities with regard to crimes against children, especially internet crimes against children. So that's an area that we're involved in. Of course, another area that you may know that we're involved in is, is protecting Texans from fraud, waste, and abuse. And those are things like going after the, the opioid manufacturers and distributors uh, and those involved in that. But it's protecting Texans when, when people seek to take advantage of them. And we have a dedicated team of folks who do that every day and do it really, really well. The final one is, is and quite frankly, when General Paxton asked me originally, and of 
course, I told him no at first. Uh, but he's a pretty persistent guy, and you all probably know that. Well, and you were one of his constituents at one point when he was in the legislature. I was. I was. Uh, but the thing that attracted me was the opportunity to safeguard the freedoms of Texas. And one thing that General Paxton thinks and, and puts as a high priority in our office is that we're going to defend the U.S. Constitution. We're going to defend the Texas Constitution. And so when it's an overreaching federal government, we will sue the President of the United States, which we did when Obama was for president. What's not reported so much in, in the press is we've actually sued the Trump administration. Sorry, Harry. Uh, when, because when the federal government encroaches our rights as Texans, and our rights as the state of Texas, whether it's the EPA or the Department of Labor, then we're going to stand up for, for Texans' rights. We also are going to stand up for Texans' rights when localities decide they're not going to follow Texas law. And whether that's the city of Austin, that'll shock you for those who are from Austin. That actually, the city, cover your ears, Justice. Uh, when the city of Austin, for some, they don't seem to want to follow what the legislature tells them to follow. They think for some reason they're special and above the law. And when they do that, guess what? That's the rule of the Attorney General. So we're going to safeguard those freedoms. Oh, yeah. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that, too, because we've got another city I know that the Attorney General's. I'm saving that one. Well, yeah. Well, we're going to get to that.